Here we have the Revel Control Nano Hex. It's tiny 4 channel remote controller, charging cable, landing gears, but normally I don't mount them. And finally, with some spare propellers and the user manual, I showed you all contents of the box. Hexa is Greek and stands for 6. So the hexacopter uses 6 motors and propellers. Obviously, the two white propellers indicate the front. There are also LEDs which indicate the direction, but this is rather annoying on a hex. Here we have a size comparison to some more serious quadcopters. Parrot Rolling Spider and the Hubson X4 FPV. Let's look briefly at the inner workings. Keep in mind electrostatic discharge when working on electronic components. Okay, there's not much to see. We have six DC motors, an antenna and a few chips. As usual, a lithium polymer battery it has a capacity of 150 mAh, which lasts 6 to 7 minutes and takes about 50 minutes to charge. Let's put it back together again. There you have it, let's fly! The start preparation is simple. First, the remote control must be turned on, then the copter, and you'll hear a sound. To bind them, the left joystick has to be moved all the way forward and back again. Second sound appeared and the LEDs light up permanently. The copter is ready for takeoff. Controller is trimmed, drone is as stable as possible, although it's narrow, I'll try a flip. The flip went well, despite the loss of a lot altitude. Well, to my conclusion, the NanoHex is a funny small toy for indoor use. Outdoors it has to be completely windless due to its extremely low weight of 21 grams. It was my first remote controlled flying object. And in the beginning I was quite disappointed because I was barely able to hold it for 10 seconds in the air. It is just too agile for a beginner. So I crashed it uncountable times. However, I'm impressed of the durability because I just had to disassemble it after a crash and bend it here or there and, as you saw, it still flies. Meanwhile, I really like to fly it now and then, but for a complete beginner I'd recommend a heavier copter. The Hobson, for instance, gave me a much better learning curve. The blinking LEDs indicate that battery is low. The provided charging cable can be plugged into an iPhone wall charger or directly on a USB port on a computer. If you want to be a bit more mobile, a power bank is the way to go. Just because I'm curious, I'll plug in a USB voltage and amp meter in between. In an hour, the fun can begin again. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment.